Hello, bonjour. In my last video, I've shown you seven different mediums to make mixed media portraits. And this time I want to show you seven different techniques that you can mix and match with the mediums. And in the next video, I will show you how the mix and match of mediums and techniques give you different styles as well. Of course, they are not all the techniques that you can apply, but the one I am using and that I find quite easy to use. The first technique, and I place it first because it is the most simple, is what I call doodles or silly things. No pressure in there, just having fun, making blobs of colors and adding elements to figure out faces. You can go a bit more detailed, but still very silly or it can be doodles with just a line. And sometimes you can go a bit further with something a bit more detailed, a bit more realistic, but I still place it in the doodle category because there is no mean for being realistic. It's just having fun or it can even be a warm up. And speaking of warm up, here is a very good warm-up that I love, but it can be more than that, and it's continuous line. So here it's just looking at the image and not looking at the drawing you are making, if you can call that a drawing. This is a very, very good warm-up and also a good way to know a face better. And if you look at both the image and your drawing, you can get very interesting results. I love the style you get with that, with this technique. Look at this hand. It has a really weird shape, but I love it. I think it gives a lot of character to the portrait. And if you want to go further, you can add color to it and you can get something that looks more like a finished drawing than a warm-up. I love having fun with continuous line. It can be pencil, it can be a pen, and in that case, it's a bit more scary, but still very fun. And if you add watercolor to your continuous line, it gives a very interesting look because you can overlap. It's part of the fun of the messy look. Love this technique. The third technique is what I call line art. In that case, what is important is the drawing by itself and not much the color. And this is not a technique I use a lot because I love color so much that I always feel a bit frustrated with just a pencil drawing. So this is why sometimes I like to do this with colored pencils. It adds a bit more fun and dimension to it and I like doing that with crayons as well. So here it's just a, a line drawing but adding a bit of water to it and two different colors gives immediately something more interesting in my opinion of course. Or you can just add two colors to get some values. This is also a good way to do it or just a single colored pencil. I think it's more interesting than just a regular pencil. And it doesn't have to be complicated because these are portraits from a Zoom session for my corporate job. And <laughs> yeah, I was a bit bored. <laughs> well, after all those lines and doodles, it's time to go for color. And the first technique I use a lot in color is hard to label, but I call it shapes not filled. I mean by that I'm not filling everything. I'm leaving the white or the ivory of the paper visible and it's a part of the design. So it can be a very cool style, it can be a bit more tricky or it can be with colored pencils and you just color some parts and it gives a strong contrast to show the highlights like this one here for example where you have a lot of the white visible or like this with watercolor or this 
with alcohol markers. I like it. You don't need to feel everything. You can just suggest some parts and you don't have to be realistic with colors. This one also is very cool. I like the unusual colors. This is completely part of the design to leave the face almost untouched. Just the main elements, the cheeks, the eyes and the mouth. Love those cute girls. And this one too, with just a shadow and a bit of the hair. Did you know that you can do those portraits too? I have a course, Portrait Party, with 30 different lessons, all fully narrated, real time, accessible to beginners and more seasoned artists alike. And you can join by following the link in the description under the video. For this technique, I still rely on shapes, but this time I'm not adding lines. I am filling everything with shapes, with color, but I try to render the face without relying on lines. And it's sometimes a bit tricky. Of course, you cannot avoid to have details like the eyes, but this is the idea. I want to show you different example. This one is really the best example I can get for that is no line, just the color by itself. Or this one too, you're really rendering the light and the shadow. Can go this, this far with, uh, what is it, crayons, I guess. Yeah, there are lines, but here it's really shapes of color that are giving the effect, no outline. Like this one too. Love those two. And it can go until that, or it can go like this, filling everything but avoiding lines. Or this one, maybe one of my five portraits. And of course, after that, we have relying on outlines. So it's a mix of um, adding a lot of color, more or less, and adding a line around it, which is often or almost always for me done with ink because I like the contrast of it. So. It, it's a technique that works both way. You can do the drawing first, add the color after, or add the color first and the drawing after, like this one, or this one, which relies heavily on the drawing. If I remove the drawing, it doesn't make sense anymore. Or like this, there is an outline here and there. Or this one, which has almost only lines or this one which is watercolor and if you remove the ink your face is almost impossible to read so it's a technique that is very versatile and that works with a lot of mediums and the last technique, well, the last of my techniques is um, painting, drawing on top of something. So it can be newspaper and you add a bit of stickers. It can be just a painted background. This is a leftover of acrylic paint. And yes, it's sticking, but it's a sketchbook. It's alive. It's okay. And it gives something special. It can be uh, like a mixed media page with a portrait on top of printed papers. It's not as easy as it looks. Again, on a painted background and adding just colors with shapes not filled and stickers around it. I like this page. Or on top of a printed paper, this is a vintage paper and I have covered everything. So in this case, it's just a background, but not a part of the portrait by itself, or it can be something. Ooh, I hope you have sunglasses because this one is pretty intense, my friends. I had leftovers of 
neon and pink, um, yellow, blue, whatever. So as I said, I don't want to waste paint, so I added everything on the page. And I think it was on top of a um, colored pencil drawing. And I think it's pretty boring to have just pencil, so I try to elevate it, but maybe I failed, I don't know. Or it can be printed paper, this one, or jelly, jelly print paper with acrylic markers on top. Or this is also jelly print with stickers. And this is acrylic paint again. It gives a vibe to the portraits. Let me know in comments, which one is your favorite technique? Did you see the first video in the series where I talk about medium and the third video in the series where I talk about styles?